Presidente. Bom, bom dia. Eu sou é, a parte do Q neste Q&A, portanto sou quem faz as perguntas. O meu nome é Pedro Carreiro, sou jornalista e, e é com muito prazer que aqui estou e que agradeço também a vossa presença. Um, enfim, o Gary Kasparov não, não precisa de, de, de apresentações. Todos sabemos que ele foi durante 20 anos, esteve durante 20 anos no topo da, da, do xadrez mundial, está retirado, mas continua uh, a ser, sobretudo, um momento muito crítico na maneira como vê o mundo que o rodeia, na maneira como vê a sua Rússia e, o, e até o regime uh, vigente, de que é, um claro, contestatário, uh, mas, sobretudo, tornou-se um guru, embora a expressão esteja muito estafada, tornou-se um, um guru de gestão de, de, de empresas, porque é, de facto, um dos maiores uh, estrategas do mundo. Nós temos meia hora e, e vamos tentar uh, mantermos dentro do horário uh, que já acumula algum atraso e, portanto, eu não, não vou desperdiçar muito mais tempo a ouvir-me, ou melhor, a pô-los a ouvir-me, uh, e vou... vou, vou uh, I'm going to welcome you, Kasparov, Mr. Kasparov, for being here today. It's very nice to, to, to have you here and um, to make this interview in which I'll show, uh, I shall make some, some questions and then if you, if you wish, uh, and I expect you to, uh, to make some, some questions in the end, we'll stick to the 30 minutes, uh, I'm, I promise you that. Uh, and uh, so let's start. And I would start for a, for a, a very broad question, and, uh, which is uh, why do you consider uh, that um, your thesis that uh, life imitates chess, uh, that management, managing uh, companies, it's not very different from, from making the strategy uh, in, a, in, a, in a chess game. And, well, I'd like to hear your, your fundamentals. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I think that it goes without saying that uh, any chess player is not only making decisions, but to be successful also has to analyze why certain decisions made or certain decisions are not made. And um, by doing it for more than 25 years, I decided to share my thoughts on this very important subject in the upcoming book with a tentative title, How Life Imitates Chess, because I think that no matter in what field decisions are made, whether it's chess or it's any sort of business or politics or military, there are same or similar components used for the decision-making process. Uh, very often, in my view, we are mixing quantity with quality. We think that decisions made by the governments in the White House are different from decisions made uh, in, in, in the daily life, let's say in the kitchen. While, in my view, the components that we are mixing into this process are quite the same. The magnitude of decision is different, but we're going through the same mind process. So I, basically, I, I separate all decisions process uh, in three parts. You know, one is considering material, material gains. In chess, it could be an extra pawn, extra piece. In business, uh, it, it's financial gain. Uh, it could be any material benefit in daily life. This is one segment. Two is time, because we always see how can we exchange some material gains for winning time, or vice versa. Uh, it's, it's often said time is money. And the third one, which is most complicated, is quality, because here we don't have an exact scale. So quality could be very, very different, depending on our uh, understanding, on our preferences. But mixing these this three major categories, gives us our own decision-making formula. What is important in my view is that is, uh, there is no one universal advice which is very often given by you know, diet specialists or uh, uh, psychologists. They say, this is what you should do. I don't believe that there's one advice that's good for all of us because we could be very different people than we are. Somebody could be more emotional, I'm more emotional. Somebody could be calm. It, it is not good, it is not bad. It's just given by nature. 
What is very important for us is to understand our strengths and our weakness. And while we understand this, we have to come up with this, the formula which helps us to use our advantages and at the same time to cover our disadvantages. It's like if you look at the military, a military uh, battlefield. If you have cavalry, obviously you try to fight in the valley. If you are fighting against cavalry, you try to find a different uh, uh, landscape with hills where you can uh, destroy the advantage of powerful cavalry. Same in, in decision making. Uh, the number one priority is to be absolutely honest with yourself, to go through this relentless analysis of your own performance. And uh, the greatest danger, as you can hear it from somebody who was on top for 20 years, the greatest danger is to rely on your success. That's what we do very often, because it's a, no it's a human nature. We are complacent, complacent by nature. We want, we great. We want because we did something great. We may not pay attention to the fact that we also made mistakes, but our opponent made bigger mistakes. Now, relying on the success, in just on success, might be very dangerous because opposition, which was losing before, is trying to come back and, and find your mistakes and uh, capitalize on what they analyzed and what they found in, 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 in their process of, of improving their game, their business performance, their military record or political record. So uh, I believe that success might be the potentially the, the greatest enemy of the future success. So uh, we have to be very honest with ourselves. We have to know at every given moment our strengths, our weaknesses, and to be fair with the quality of our performance. And then when we recognize what we are good at and what we are not good at, we should come up with a plan that will help us to benefit from our advantages. I'm, I was never shy to recognize my mistakes. I think this is one of the greatest dangers for leading business people and also for leading politicians. They believe very often that admitting mistake will be diminishing. I think to the contrary, it's a great strength to recognize that something went wrong at the time, before it's too late. And uh, it's also, it is important to see that we, we know when and how decisions are to be made. Again, another example, if you are driving the car on the highway, you have to be a good driver. You, you know, you just have to drive well, you have just to look around, that's it. Now you are at the crossroad. You have to look for directions. You have to stop. You don't have to push gas, so you have to stop. You have to look around. You have to look at, read the signs. Sometimes you have to ask for assistance. So it's, 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 it's a very different mode. So unless you recognize that things change, because in the, ro in the road is very simple, highway, crossroad. In the life, it's not as simple. Unless you recognize it, you, you're pushing the gas, you cross uh, uh, the, um, this, um, uh, you miss your turn, and it might be too late to go back. So uh, I think that in, 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 in life, when we are about to make big decision or even small decision, we should first look at the environment and also at our own uh, state of mind and recognize what's best for, uh, uh, what is the best formula for us to use at this moment. Let me talk, uh, let me try to be honest and talk uh, about the, the, the Portuguese uh, people advantages and disadvantages. There is a, a stereotype that like all stereotypes are probably wrong, but there is a stereotype that Portuguese people are, uh, tend to disregard strategy, but are very good on solving problems under pressure. And let me tell you, we are very proud of, of being the, this way, of, of being so, so flexible on, on, on the last minute, on the last mile. Um, is this, uh, how do you see that uh, this uh, ability to, or not, to, to, to work very well under pressure, but disregard the, the, um, the planning? Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm always reluctant to generalize the whole nation. Of course. It's, I think the stereotypes are not working. You can say something about Portuguese people, about Spaniards, about Russians, about Americans, but you know, you have millions and tens of millions of people. They are different. 
they are very different and I don't think that an, get the same advice can work for the nation, for even for family. It's not like father like son. It could be a very different composition. So that's why what works for me may not work for my children. They have to look for their own winning formula because they're different. There's still the different uh, uh, genetic combination. It's, I, had, I inherited mine from my parents and my children, you know, uh, from, from their parents. So it's not only me, but my wife. So uh, that's why um, uh, I think that for every, say, for every nation, there are certain stereotypes which might, to a certain degree, be true. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's not for the nation to make a decision, but for one person. So um, you may find that your composure uh, could be different from the traditional stereotype. So that's, again, it's not good, it's not bad. You can have a very attacking, a very strong attacking player, you can have a defensive player. And it's not, it, it is not something that guarantees your success or failure. So Forza Zuri plays Catenaccio, so what? They won world championship four times. Brazilians play differently, they won five times. So what is, does it give you an idea? No. It's about the quality of presentation. You know what you do the best. So, and that's exactly what you do. So you stick to your own game, which, again, should be decided only by you, because nobody else knows better what you are. Um, and uh, solving problems under pressure, it's a, great, it's, uh, um, it's a great advantage. Because I think many people are scared of, uh, of uh, decisions made under time trouble. We're all getting confused. We, we want more time, which is, by the way, a very popular mistake nowadays uh, because we have so much information available. Computer, mouse click, we collect information. But with all these beautiful tools, with all the data that we can download, there will be no decision. It's still up to us to make a decision. So it's a paradox. We have more information, but we have to make decisions quicker. And it gives us an illusion that if we wait a little bit more, we collect more data and it will be a decision no. So having more information, uh, in fact, doesn't help us very much. And I think that very often what we think of our advantages, time and information, can be dangerous, can short circuit our intuition. Because at the end of the day, intuition is what matters most. So when we can sense that things are wrong or right, so our gut feelings. And that's, that's a big quality that we very often ignore and do not use properly. So the bad decision is, is better than no decision at all? Uh, well, in chess we say that, again, it's, uh, it might be exaggeration that is a bad plan is better than no plan. Uh, which, again, might be exaggeration, but at least when you did something wrong, you can learn from it. Unless, you know, you do nothing, so you will not learn nothing. So risk and uncertainty are not welcome all the time, especially by big corporations, but at the end of the day, without taking risk, without going through unchanted waters, you may not, you may not learn something that will be absolutely vital for you. Uh, so the, 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 the trick is when you look at, at the big picture, so not to mix strategy and tactics. And again, I will use a phrase that is, is, works in chess, that tactics is knowing what to do, when and where there is something to do. While strategy is knowing what to do, when and where there is nothing to do. So it is quite important that you recognize at what moment you have to employ new tactics and at what point you have to change your strategy. Because uh, we call anything we do today, you know, from cleaning the floors and uh, uh, you know, uh, redoing our, redecorating our apartment, we'll use the word strategy. And we trivialize this word. And uh, the danger is that sometimes the good strategy can be toppled by bad tactics or vi vice versa. So, uh, and it may even succeed. So uh, you may have bad strategy but excellent tactics and the circumstances may work for you. But you should recognize when and, and when and what was wrong. So, uh, 
I think it's the, in the modern world, the, uh, the best example, if you could call it the best example, is the situation in, in Iraq, which I call bad execution of no plan. <laughs> yeah, so it's... <laughs> okay. Well, you say that there's no, there's no golden rule to be a winner, to be the perfect manager, that you have to find it within yourself. How do you do that? How do you find it? It can't be just as difficult as being introspective. How do you, do you maximize your potential and how do you identify the, your opponent's flaws and, and take the most of it? Oh, as, I, as I say, it, it starts with you. So uh, you have to be very vigilant with what are you doing. And if, if we fail, it's very natural. We analyze why we failed. So it's, it's easy. Now, the big problem is if we succeed. So if we succeed, we drop it. We say, fine, we are winning. We are the best. So we, we don't have to analyze the situation again. My view is that every crisis, no matter whether we succeed, succeeded or failed, should be properly analyzed. Because if we succeed, succeeded, somebody failed. And this somebody, and normally there are more losers than winners, of course, this somebody will be analyzing, will be investing time and efforts to find out what went wrong for them. And unless we be, will be one step ahead by finding the same things, and coming up with new ideas later on, we will not, we will not uh, be able to withstand this opposition. Uh, again, I want to give you, can give some stories, but one story I think is quite uh, 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 telling. It's, it's, it's almost forgotten name now, uh, Max Sennett. And this man uh, in, 19, in, in 1913, 1914, 1915 was the hottest name in Hollywood. He uh, uh, was a producer of uh, most popular silent movies. And by the way, one of his discoveries was Charlie Chaplin. In, and uh, he found a, a winning formula for his movies. Uh, it's, you probably saw all these movies that the uh, uh, bunch of police, police officers, they were outsmarted by the star in the show. Why it was a winning formula? Because most of the people who watched these movies in this nickel audience, in these cheap theaters, they were poor immigrants. They were suffering from police abuse. And so for them to, to watch the, these police people being outsmarted by an ordinary guy was a, a big relief. So Max Sennett made millions very quickly. It's probably the first time in the uh, history of business where pennies and nickels turned into millions very quickly. But then, he went down, no, even before the, uh, before the silent movies disappeared and sound movies took in. Because Max Sennett was so good at doing this, he didn't want to change. So he was doing the same product in the early 20s when nobody wanted it anymore. And he went out of business. So it's, it's, I think it's a great danger. I also suffered similar setback in 2000. I lost a, a world championship match to my former pupil, Vladimir Kramnik after winning seven Grand Slam tournaments, playing arguably best chess in my career, because I thought, you know, it's, it's just about uh, adding a little bit here and there, and it's not that I stopped working. It's not that I underestimated my opponent. I didn't want to accept or admit the fact that my game also suffers from some setbacks. I didn't make enough uh, investigation of my own game, which my opponent did. After the match, I took this painful lesson and I came back. But, you know, it took a very painful defeat to recognize that unless you are so vigilant with your own game, even if you're winning, you might be in danger. And in this modern world, when technology is changing every month and the, the pace of change is so, is so fast, so we have to be also very quick in recognizing the danger. Mm -hmm. You told that, the, uh, you said that, uh, um a leader uh, should uh, recognize when he fails and learn with it and be humble, I guess, with, uh, with, uh, with the ways he looks at, it, at, at his, his, its performance. Now, um, isn't that uh, uh, showing to be vulnerable? Isn't that 
um, uh, eventual uh, possible flaw to, to, to the ones you lead, to, to, to your team who is, who is above you, and it looks that you are hesitating. Okay, you it's are... The, no, if you change strategy too often, yes, that's bad. But it's again, there's no good and bad, you know, it's, it's a sign of leadership, whether you recognize when it's time to say, yeah, we, we went in the wrong direction. Because by not doing it on time, you put in jeopardy the whole team, you know, might be the whole country, uh, if, if you're prime minister or the president. So uh, I think, you know, by, by making this confession might be a very important thing. And I, if we look back in the history, I think we had enough uh, great political leaders or business leaders who, who were able to recognize that they did something wrong. And that's, that's why they were so great, because they, they could take the hit. Mm -hmm. Today, I think it's just we are, we are trying to hide our weaknesses. But at the end of the day, we're all human, so we, we, we doomed to make mistakes. So, but you can't imagine that you, you can avoid mistakes. But what is important that you always recognize it on time and you, you offer directions. Don't say, oh, we made mistakes. What a turn. No. Yeah, it's, things didn't work. There's always a plan B. There's always a back, backup idea. So we have to reorganize our resources, cut our losses, and we just, you know, we move further. Mm -hmm. So, we, you know, in business we say don't, don't throw uh, good money after bad money. Unfortunately, you know, it doesn't work in politics. If you look around, so you can see many cases or politicians sticking with, with the plan, which failed. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's again, it's not good, not bad. You know, when I want to mention Iraq, it's, mm -hmm. I'm not even giving, a, 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 giving a assessment about the whole, you know, uh, 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 a whole adventure started by U.S. administration there. It doesn't work. So just, you know, it's, it may be a great idea, great city in the world. It doesn't work, period. So just, and that's a problem that many people in the world top people, they are not willing to say, ah, we have to, we have to confess and we have just to do something else. Mm -hmm. I'd like to open the, the, the discussion with yourselves and, and ask for, for, for some, some questions. Um, ah, okay. Uh, the questions can be made in, in, as perguntas podem ser feitas em português, é para substituir, é isso. Um, e podia só perguntar se eu tenho as luzes contra mim, não vejo muito bem, mas, por favor. Okay, just, just in case. Oh, okay. Good morning for all. Yeah, yeah I can see you. I'm Samuel, and uh, I'm a student. And my question for you is, let's suppose you are in a competition, and you can't be the winner. It's impossible to win. And you have two choices. One, it's the tie. And the second choice is lose, maybe trying to be the winner in the next time. What's the best, tie or lose? No, no it's technically tie is better, you know. It's, uh, again, it's, it's about risk assessment. The, sometimes, it's, sometimes I would recommend to take huge risk, but it depends on the environment. It depends on many factors. I don't think there is one advice. You ask about general situation, but there will be, could be so many factors because it doesn't happen in a vacuum. You are not playing in the casino on, on Mars. You're, you're talking about a situation which happens with you, with your family, with your company, with a uh, with group of people, and there are many other factors attached. Each situation requires specific analysis, and I cannot... I cannot be sure, you know, uh, whether, you know, I would give one advice or another unless I have enough data regarding players involved to analyze. Obviously, in, uh, say, seven, out of seven against three ca uh, uh, cases, I would probably say sticking with status quo would be better. But still, I'm sure there will be two, three cases out of ten where I say, no, look, Maybe we have to take a huge risk because even if we lose, it may give us uh, better chances for, for other endeavors because things are not happening separately. So one event is all, always tied to another. Mais perguntas? Hello, my name is Antonio. I work in SAP and I'm also a fan of chess. 
uh, just to play a little bit with the subject. Um, has a, by a strategic point of view, do you see any similarities between the three phases of chess, the openings, the middle game, and the endings uh, related to the real business or the, the business world? As a way of conceiving strategy, are there similarities? Look, I, we're all making decisions. So, and uh, I, I think that chess is a very good tool in helping you to analyze your decision-making process. Again, similarities is you now there, there are always winners and losers. It's everywhere. And, uh, and there are less winners than, than losers. It's both in chess and, and, and in business. So obviously in chess, as in any sport, in any game, you have a clear, uh, uh, you can clearly identify winners and losers. While in daily life, in business or in politics, it's the, <laughs> this identification is not so clear. Over there. Hi, good morning. My name is Paula. And you said something that uh, got me a little bit worried uh, because uh, I'm a manager and usually I rely a lot on data analysis for making decisions. And you said that uh, sometimes analyzing too much data can kill intuition. Um, okay, it's true. Sometimes you, can, uh, you cannot gather all the information you need to make a decision, so you must uh, take some risk. But analyzing data for me as a manager, I find it very important. And uh, you, uh, I was thinking if you're trying to say something different here, I would like you to uh, make this uh, point more clear. No, no. Uh, again, under no circumstances, a professional chess player, okay, ex-professional chess player, uh, can recommend you to ignore the data. I was known as the best researcher in chess. I spent a lot of time allocating the data. It was different 25 years ago. We had to read the books, magazines, make little cuts. Uh, today, it's just a computer. And so any 15-year-old kid could learn more about chess you know, than Bobby Fischer was able to find out throughout his whole career. But what I'm saying is that to, to make a creative decision, you have to step down from your, uh, from your uh, work desk. Because you have the data, I have the data, he has the data. We all have the same data. Data doesn't make decisions. We all go through the same process, finding process. Uh, you may have a little bit more I have on one side. I could have a little bit more on the other side. But we're dealing with the same environment. Make it, to make a decision, we have to be visionaries. Uh, you can wake up a manager, you can go to bed as a manager, but sometime a day you should be a visionary. You should try to take, you know, a step back and look at this as an impartial observer and to use your senses. That's what I'm saying, because without using intuition, which is a combination of our will, of our confidence, of our experience, we cannot make creative decisions. Uh, otherwise, we'll be reduced to the role of microprocessor. So we're not processing information, and uh, going with, the, as, with what we think is just the easiest way to go. We, we always have to insert the element of human creativity. I hope it's, it's, it's answering your question. Well, the, most of these people um, uh, are from the public sector or work with the, 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 the public sector, uh, which is uh, different from private uh, companies. Uh, they, uh, um, the public sector has different goals, uh, but non nonetheless it has to manage resources and that as, as its own strategy. Would you say that it's no different? Uh, because you say the, 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 the decision-making process on the White House is the same as in the kitchen, mm. but the pressure is not, yeah, obviously. Exactly. Yes. Oh, you know, if, if you ask how's the wife, she may have a different opinion. <laughs> so, and uh, I think at the end of the day, you should judge by the result. And I would definitely prefer a high-quality pie made at home than this the U.S. foreign policy made by this administration. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> uh, 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 again, it's the 
it's, a, it's an excellent point. You have private sector, you have public sector. The difference is, you know, the, again, risk assessment, because you can afford more on the private sector. So it's, because it's, you know, it has more entrepreneurial freedom. Obviously, here you have more responsibilities, which is, again, it's a part of your decision-making formula. That's an environment. It's like, a, you know, a battlefield. You have your resources, so you look at this and you decide how you run it, how you run your military campaign, political campaign, business campaign. You deal with this current situation. You, obviously, your ability to make drastic changes is limited, so you adjust yourself to those restrictions. I think that's, again, it's not good, not bad. It's just, you just have to be, to act accordingly to the conditions, resources, frameworks provided by your job description, provided by, you know, by your business environment. That's it. So you could be very effective in the public sector and it could be a total disaster in the private sector. If, by doing the same things, by the way. So because, because the conditions are different and the same strategy may be excellent on one side and total failure on the opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we, have, we have one question. We'll, we'll time for one last question. We run out of time, but yeah. one question always nice. It's like a dessert. Yeah. <laughs> well, not being the case. No. So uh, then, then no, I'm sorry. Uh, over there, please. Okay. 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 Now, sorry, but it's in Portuguese. Uh, my name is Antonio, and the question is in Portuguese. Ok. É uma pergunta de... Ok. É uma pergunta de curiosidade. Está em voga, ou começa a estar em voga, uma teoria chamada a teoria das complexidades, do qual um ilustre português aplica no seu dia-a-dia, -dia, que chama-se José Mourinho. Seria interessante um duelo, um duelo com o José Mourinho, sabendo jogar xadrez consigo, quem é que ganharia? Até que ponto é que alguém, utilizando a teoria das complexidades num jogo de xadrez, pode ser aplicada no mundo empresarial? Não, eu sei, eu sei, sim. Eu sei, eu sei. Eu apenas... Você está entendendo a pergunta? É uma pergunta complexa. Um, so I'm trying to figure out an angle because it's like a, like a question, you know, like Russian doll, you know, you have, you have many, many things inside. So, um, uh, things could, again, I'm always trying to break things down. So I always, you know, when I look at problem, uh, I, let's say at the chess board, I start with chess. There's a chess position, and I look at this chess position. And um, I, uh, I sense that, you know, I have to do certain things. Protect myself on the queen side, attack on the king side. And uh, I was always curious how to explain my mind process, which is very quick and sometimes uh, 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 too complicated. I wanted to break it down to explain to amateur players why I did this move, why I rejected this move. And that's why, you know, I came to the conclusion that the same analytical process can apply, can apply to, uh, can apply to uh, decision making in general. Because we look at this big decision, but eventually, you know, we should, you know, we can break it down to the molecular level. Uh, and uh, then I just recognized that, you know, it all depends on, on your abilities and your and the opportunities provided for you. If, let's say, I have a same chess, it's the same chess position, but I may have a lot of time to contemplate or I could be in a time trouble. Obviously, my decision-making process will alter quite dramatically because I could invest time in analyzing some very complicated lines, or if I'm at, under time pressure, I have to do something very, very, very different. Time clock is ticking. You know, chess will play with clocks. So when I, and I have to complete my moves within a certain period of time, I mean, amount of time. So I don't have luxury of, uh, of uh, um, uh, uh, proceeding with a grandiose plan. 
So I have to probably settle for a tie <laughs> or for something that could put me on the safe side. Now, um, as for a football coach you mentioned, uh, he has a luxury of working with unlimited amount of money. <laughs> uh, what makes me sad that this money is stolen from my country, but... <laughs> So uh, that's why, you know, what looks for us complex, for him it's simple because he knows that his resources, by fulfilling his dreams, are virtually unlimited. That's why, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of this soccer club. Uh, and which, by the way, it makes me sick because every time you arrive in London, when the driver hears a Russian accent, they say, oh, are you a Chelsea fan? I said, no. <laughs> I said, no, no. And, uh, and frankly speaking, you know, I don't want them to win because I think, you know, by, it's like an 800 pound gorilla. You know, it just, it, look, it's, of course, it, it, it makes less damage than the White House, but, <laughs> but I also think it's, you know, it ruins, it ruins the, the, the genuine concept that, you know, you win because you have a lot of creativity, you, you, you use your limited resources, you put players here and there. When you can buy five national teams and put them together, it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not good. So, um, I, again, I, I, I hope that you know, this, this exercise will not last long because eventually I hope my country will change and uh, you know, this flow of money Will, will stop, which will be, by the way, good for my country and also for English soccer and European soccer and for Portuguese soccer as well. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Castro. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. And, uh, and my... And thank you for the last question. When I said dessert, I didn't expect it would be so tasty. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.